then the, the meal it's other. It's got a little more flour in it, and yet it's a little more coarse in some respects. I got that, and I got measured in this little bowl here about a cup and, well, a cup and a half, cup and three quarters, something like that. That's what it looks like when I put it in the bowl because I've got my, my skillets in there that are heating with oil in them like you supposed to did. And I got to be sure I got the skillets enough to put the, the cornmeal and not too much cornmeal to go into the skillet, you know, because it run over. That's bad. Don't look good. Now, on this thing right here, I got about three quarters of a cup of flour. Well, I'm going to put it in there. And I'm going to mix it up. And if it don't did right, I'm going to find some more flour somewhere. I can tell you that, or more cornmeal. <laughs> But that's the way I mix it up when I'm at, the, at home. But they, they say, look, man, you ain't got time to do all that on this. You got to mix that thing up right. So what I'm doing, mix up, stir up. The thing I'm about is stir, mix things up right. And then this, I'm going to put my dry ingredients, what I got to put on there. I put, I use baking powder and soda when I use buttermilk, what I got right there. Now, what I'm going to put on here is three teaspoonful of baking powder. Because I got nearly three cups of stuff, cornmeal and flour. I didn't marry it right either, you see there? <laughs> <laughs> Just put a little bit more in the spoon. Now on this uh, baking soda, a pinch or two. Now a pinch depends on how big you pinch and what you're pinching, see? <laughs> so I'm just pinching baking soda, so I put two, two pinch in there like that. Then I put it now if I was pinching something else, maybe a bigger pinch, ain't no telling. <laughs> Mix that up real good like this. Mmm, hmm. Oh, look out there. Look out, can't stood that. Get that out of the way. Get my dish towel there. And don't be spilling that because you got just enough in there. Just there, you got to watch that. Put it back in the pan. Now, what I'm gonna do, I got some crackling that I done broke up real good. I'm broke them some more, too. Put it in there like that. Real, oh, 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 man, I love that. Put it in there like that. And you got to have a little salt. Not much when you got them cracking because they got a little salt on them already. But I would put about a teaspoon full of salt. Let's see if I got that measured right this morning. Did right. <laughs> Make it a, oh, boy, I don't know how I do that, but it sure doesn't come out right. Go ahead and stir them up some more. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to beat these eggs. I'm going to beat those devils real good. Let me put this out of my way here before I spill that. Now, I got to beat them. I'm going to just get with it. I got three or two eggs in here. That's how many I got in here. Three or two eggs, depend on the size of the egg. Now, these were not the big egg. The, the, sometimes I got double ochre, I just put two. Sometimes just put one, depending on the size of the double ochre. Now, these were what they call large eggs. They didn't look large to me, but that's what they called them. Put them on there. Now, I'm going to get this mixing a little bit here so I can uh, fix it right. Put a little buttermilk on there. Measure that very carefully, you notice. Put that in there. Stir it up. I don't want to not stir it up. Now, I'm going to put some, uh, some grease from them frying pans, some shortening in there. Got to put some shortening. Now, we put this egg. And they talk about fold an egg. How in the hell can you fold an egg is what I would like to know. There ain't no way to did that. What you got to do is stir that egg. <laughs> and we put a little bit more buttermilk on there like that because we got to have this just right if we're going to do it right. Put that there like that. Stir some more. Get them cornmeal going. Now, do, 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 yeah. Some more buttermilk. Because you got to pour into you skillet. You can't just put it in there with a spoon. Now, now we're going. Now we're getting that right. Come on, cornmeal. Get yourself mixed up there. Messing around. Whew, nearly got myself again. Can't waste any of that, because I got it measured carefully, as you know. <laughs> Come on, cornmeal. Getting just about right. Just a little bit more buttermilk. Just happen to have enough. 
Ain't that something? Just exactly enough. I don't know how I do that. I tell you the truth, I don't. <laughs> Now, I got to get this over here where I can get those frying pan skillets out of there. It's got hot, hot grease. I've been preheating my oven at 400 degrees. Let me get this and put them out here where I can get at it. Oh, and that's hot, yeah. Ooh, I guarantee that's hot. Go right there. That's just in case. I'm going to pour this in there. Hi. Measure that carefully, too. And I'm going to pour this in there and leave a little in the skillet. Just a little in the skillet. Now, put that back there like that and stir some more. Stir that all in there. Stir that short into that. It's going there good, too. And I'm going to pour it in them hot, hot skillet. Crackling cornbread. Oh, come on there, man. That look good. I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. I'm putting it on there like that because I want something this way. Like that. Come on, come on. Now you're going. Now you're going there. And I got enough to go in here some more. I'm going to put that in them oven. At 400 degrees and cook that until it's brown, and then I'm going to took it out and turn it over and do how you call it, sweat it a little bit. Open the oven. That's the first thing you did. Put that on the upper shelf where it's going to brown. Put this on the upper shelf too with that. Got that and just let it cook. There it go. Now we got the crackling cornbread on. Let me put this out of my way. And what I want to do right now is get this stuff. Oh, look what I found underneath here. I'm going to make guinea gumbo in just a minute. But before I did that, I may just told you a story because I feel a story coming on, you know? Putting that there out of my way. I, I love to fly airplanes, that's a lie. <laughs> I'm scared to death of airplanes. And I never can't help but thought about that young fellow, this Cajun. He did not know nothing about airplanes, and he won a prize, going to take a trip to New York City. This is several years ago. And the prize was a free plane ride, and all the airline was going to treat him like he was the president, the king, and the queen, and everything. Well, man, he got on the airplane in New Orleans, and just as he got on the airplane, a little red gasoline truck came up there and put gasoline on that truck. It was one of these DC-7, had all them windmill on it. The airplane take off, landed in Birmingham, Alabama. Just the airplane land, here come a little red truck. Hook up them gasoline. He look out that window, there it is. Airplane take off, Atlantic, Georgia, went there. Just as the airplane land, here come that little red truck. Put it up with gasoline some more. Airplane take off, Washington, D.C. As soon as the airplane land, here come that little red truck. Pull it up with gasoline some more. Take off, New York City. As soon as the airplane land, here come that little red truck. And the pilot come back there, the captain and the stewardess, and they say, how you like you playing right? Just fine. Say, wasn't that a fast trip, though, huh? He say, yeah, and that little red truck don't do too bad either. You know that? <laughs> now, what I got doing right here, I've been making a rule. I've been making a rule to make a guinea gumbo. Now, in this guinea gumbo, I got a guinea. That's what you put in guinea gumbo. It's a guinea. I got one guinea hen. 
I done hauled off and got that guinea hen brown and brown off real good right there. And I'm gonna stir that around to be sure it's been, oh yeah, that's just right, just right. One guinea hen for one guinea hen gumbo. Now, right here I got some Andouille sausage. That is, ooh wee, that's good. <laughs> it tastes good. It's good just like that. I'm gonna put this on this. Well, I got that guinea brown off already. And then, yeah, while nobody was looking, I made it roux. That roux is just right. Mm-hmm. You see that shine on that roux? That means that roux is just right. Now, what I'm going to did, you can't make gumbo unless you have onion. So I'm going to put a cup and a half, one cup and a half onion chopped up real good. Put it in there. And I got a half a cup of bell pepper. Put it in there. And stir it around a little bit. Hmm. That don't want to do it. Got a little hot on it. You know that? It's good, though. Put that. Oh, stir that around, and you know, the roux's gonna brown a little bit more with an onion in there. Get them onion going good in that. Mmm! i tell you what, you give me a slice of bread and I'll eat that right now. <laughs> and i put a little celery in there just as quick as I can. Put that on there. Now right here, I got garlic, and I got parsley, and I wait a little bit to put that in there. It just go in here like this. It takes a little while to make a roux. There's no question about that. What you got to do when you make a roux, it took you time. Took you time. A lot of times, I get up and make a roux at nighttime when I, gotta, I can't go to sleep about thinking about some problem in safety or some problem in... I'm going to speak somewhere and I don't know what kind of people I'm going to talk with. And uh, I get up and make a roux. And I don't throw it away, I freeze it. And then slice it off like you would bread and use it whenever you want to. But you see them onion there, and them bell pepper, and them celery, they take a little while to cook. And they're gonna get clear. Or you think they're clear anyhow, you can just look like you'll look through them. Now, then I put some parsley on that. Wonderful seasoning. This is fresh parsley, chopped up as fine as we can do that without cutting our fingernail in it. That's all. Real fine parsley. Ooh, that smells good. Now that makes the sandwich. If you're gonna make a sandwich, I'll just make it taste more better. Mm-hmm. Now, now what I'm going did, I'm gonna put the garlic on it. But you uh, usually wait. I'm getting a little juice in there. You wait to put the garlic in there because if you just put garlic in grease or or something like that, it gets hard and it loses its seasoning value, and you don't want to did that. So, wait. That's about a. Let me see. Let me smell and see how much garlic. About a teaspoonful and a half. I want to get it all, too. The delicate flavor of garlic is good for anybody or anything. I tell you that for true. I love it. I can't cook without onion and without garlic. Now, we put that on there like that. Now what we got to do, we're going to use cold water to get this roux away from the vegetable what you got in there. That's about a cup of water right now. I'm going to put about four cups of water on this. Now the parsley was about a, a half a cup of parsley what I put on, just about a half a cup. You see that begin to separate? Hot up a little bit, it'll separate. But you use cold water or... <laughs> Cold wine. <clears throat> I don't want that uh, water to miss that wine too long. Put that wine in there, and I'm gonna bring that root. And when you cook with wine, as soon as you it comes to a boil, all the alcohol's gone from it. So do, do, the people who say, "Well, I can't cook like that because I don't drink." Well, if you don't drink, you're gonna get dehydrated. 
And if you get dehydrated, you're going to look like a pretzel or something like that, and that's bad. So what you got to do is just remember all the alcohol gone. I'm stirring that up, and it's doing real good. See how that separate there? See the vegetable all come apart from that, from them flour and grease? That's what I did. I took about two cups of flour and one, not quite one cup of oil. I put a little uh, bacon dripping in a little uh, olive oil and a little cooking oil. Well, just what I had, you know. That's all. I just used what I had. Put it in there. Excuse me there, Rue. Oh, man, that smells good. Now, I got this going pretty good. But I got to put some other stuff in here, you know. I can't mess it around and neglect it. So what I'm going to do is put about salt to taste. Salt to taste. That's one teaspoon. Teaspoon and a half. <laughs> Two teaspoons, three teaspoons and a half is what I put on it. That's gonna cook out just right. Put that on there like that. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some Lee and Perrin. That's that good Perrin sauce. I know that family, Perrin. Now, put this on there. About a tablespoon full heaping. A heaping tablespoonful. Put that on there like that. Now, I'm going to put some hot sauce. But you got to remember, that on there, it got a little hot on it, so we put just a little hot sauce. <laughs> just a little on that. And I stir some more. Ooh, boy. Now, I'm going to pour this on this guinea and... Oh, man. Put it on there like that. If you think I'm going to waste this rule, you're wrong. Because that's what I saved this water for right here to rinse this out. Oh, man. That full cup of water, full cup of wine. And I want to be sure I got everything on there. I want to be sure I got it all. Yep. Oh, don't splash. That's not nice. There we go. Put it on there like that. Get all that root that you possible can. You don't want to lose any of that. Getting out of there. And don't brought yourself back. Turn that fire off there because I don't want to burn that pot. Then I stir this a little bit. It's good. Get all the root over them spoon. I'm not going to give any of that to anybody. I'm going to eat it all myself. There we go. Got that going. Put the lid on there and just let that cook. That's going to be all right, just like it is. Now, what I'm going to do is put this down out of my way, and I got another little dish that I'm going to fix. I hate to waste food. I use, oh, look at that, I almost left that wine out of there. Ha! Oh, this seems any good. <laughs> yep. Put in there. How are we going? Put that on there real good. <laughs> I got right here some, I cook some black-eyed peas. I cook crowd of peas, all kind of peas, all the time. And it is left over, I make a casserole. Even English peas, I make a casserole. This is a, a casserole we're going to make right now with this. First, I take a half a cup of honey, and I pour it in here like that. Mm-hmm. And I get a spoon, and I'm going to mix that with and try to get all of it I can. But to be sure I'm going to get it all, I just happen to have a little, little wine to pour in that. Mm. To get that honey out of there, that's the only reason I use the wine. Dead to get the honey out there. See, Dad took that honey out. But I might just well use the rest of that wine, too. But you know, like that. Now I got most a cup. I got, I got a, 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 about three quarters of a cup of uh, that good ketchup, a catsup, as they say in Montana. <laughs> but it's ketchup in South Louisiana. A little garlic powder. We put that on there. Not much. 
Why do you step down that garlic powder? Onion powder as much as you want. It don't make any difference. You already got some onion cooked in them, in those peas and beans if you cook them right. Then I take just about a oh, tablespoon full of mustard seed. You think that ain't a tablespoon full, but I bet it is. A dry tablespoon right there. A tablespoon full of mustard seed. Put that on there and stir it up. And we put this, we pour all this over these, these peas I got left over from yesterday. And we're gonna haul off there and have something good to eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stir it good so you get all the honey in there. There we go. Stir it up so it goes down in there good. Then you strip that with bacon. I got some bacon, just happen to have some here, isn't that nice? Strip that with bacon like that. Put it there like that. Put this here like that. Get out in there. And this one here like that. And I cut a piece in half just in case. Goes right there. And I put that there. Now, what I'm going to did, I got some of this I done fixed already. I'm going to put it over here where I can get to it. But I got something else here that looks like guinea gumbo. Yes, it does. Put that there right there. And I want you to know that that is just as pretty. Look at those leftover peas. Hey, that is a beautiful thing. And I'm going to put that on my plate in just a minute. But I'm going to got to put this other in the oven and get it going. Now. Oh. Boil, baby, boil. Let's get at it. Now, what I'm going to do is serve myself some gungo. What I did, I cooked some rice first. Take a little rice. Take a lot of rice. I love that swamp seed, I want you to know. Then, right here, I got some filet made from the leaves of the sassafras tree in South Louisiana. I made it myself. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, seventeen. I just put a little, and this is the way you do this. Always put your you filet on your rice first. And then, then put your gumbo. Oh, oh. Ooh, man. Ooh, ooh, boy. Ooh, ooh, boy. Get that gumbo in there like that. Put some on. Get a piece of guinea juice there. Got this piece of guinea. Now, I'm going to put this over here. Come back here. I just happen to have a little piece of them cornbread ready to go right there. Come with it back up. I'm gonna get me some of those beans. Uh -huh. <laughs> Along with a piece of that bacon. Look like pork and bean, but it ain't. No. <laughs> Hell no, that's leftover peas. That's what that is. I'm gonna put this over here and I'm gonna go sit down and eat that. But what I'm gonna do, first of all, I'm gonna butter my cornbread. Man, and I'll tell you something, that hot pepper gets me every now and then when I'm messing with it, and my nose gets athletic on me. <laughs> but before I butter them corn, me, corn bread there, I better pour my wine. And you always taste it to see if you should drink it enough. Good enough. <laughs> pour the wine. Put it right there. That's pretty. No. I'm gonna butter them. Oh, crackling cornbread. Oh, man, did you stand? You're gonna gain a pound a day, and that's all right with me. <laughs> Go ahead on and gain a pound. 
Oh, man. Look at that. Cornbread is good with green and with gumbo by itself, with buttermilk, with milk, anything you want to do, that cornbread is good, I guarantee. You know what, though? I got to taste those beans, those peas, see if they come out all right. Let's just see. Yep, they, they feel good. Mmm, 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 mmm. Peas of cornbread with that. That are fine. Now, let's see about this guinea gumbo. You know, guinea gumbo got a different flavor than any other kind of gumbo. Guinea has a different flavor. This was a, this guinea was a gray guinea, therefore its meat was all dark. Had it been a white guinea, the meat would have been all white. And I want you to know right now, the dark, all white, it tastes fine. Mmm. Let me get another little taste, I'll tell you about it. <laughs> that <clears throat> is absolutely Wonder must you hear? I guarantee. Mm -hmm. Let me get another little taste of that. This program was taped before a studio audience. If you would like a copy of Justin Wilson's Gourmet and Gourmet Cookbook, just send 1995 to Justin Wilson, WYES-TV, Post Office Box 840120, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70184. Or call toll-free 1-800-257-6700 to use your Visa or MasterCard. The price includes shipping and handling. The book is filled with colorful illustrations and contains over a hundred of Justin's favorite Cajun recipes. Justin Wilson's Louisiana Cookin' is made possible in part by Durkee French Foods, the people who bring us red-hot cayenne pepper hot sauce, and French's Worcestershire sauce.